my my passion is to be part of the change in city and city codes, international codes. I'm a member of the International Code Council as a part of as a part of this uh, campaign that I I want to endeavor on uh, because there are there are some codes that simply don't make sense anymore. It is illegal in the greater Austin area to divert gray water from hand washing lavatories into toilet tanks. We're almost out of water. Yes, it would be an extra pump that we would have to install. Yes, there would be an extra filtration system, but with the advent of very available, sustainable energy sources, we have to be much, much more careful about water reuse. So I suppose to answer your question, being being a farm girl who is not an architect, but finds herself as the CEO of an architecture firm, the difference that I want to make is all about sustainability. And sustainability is about, it's, it's about finances, it's about society, and it's about the environment. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with all of it because it's it's way more <laughs> than just sustainable practices on what we build but like I've got a friend here in Pittsburgh and he's six nine the shortest ceiling you can put in is six eight and so like we'll be on like I'm in an older home built in the 1920s like he looks like a giant in my house or we'll walk around and he almost hits his heads on signs but they're all to code but he is beyond the code and there's so I'm always very hesitant when I start getting towards like thresholds that I know are like hey this actually affects other people beyond just what that code minimum is because it's, a lot of it's old and so you have to think of the people now but, that's exactly right yeah um but shifting gears to something else that you had done for a while um, you were an adjunct professor for a number of years. Can you tell me a little still bit am. about what you were teaching and how you were able to balance, <laughs> still am, balance, balancing all you do because you are a CEO, you're doing all this with the Chamber of Commerce and teaching. What are you teaching and how do you balance everything? Well, I will answer the second question first. I don't have children. So I, that is, that is a, a big part of a lot of people's lives that takes up a lot of time and energy. And, um, I, I do have, I have a stepdaughter who is, who is lovely. She's, she's 16. So she doesn't need the kind of attention that younger children do. Um, but I, I am able to take the energy that I would have by raising a family, uh, I'm, I'm able to take that energy and put it towards my passions. So I have a degree in agronomy. I've got, I have a bachelor of science in agronomy from Texas Tech University. And like I mentioned, I didn't just sell vegetables for farms. I harvest, I planted them, harvested them, cleaned them, managed the farm, consulted on farms. And uh, six years ago in October, I was recruited to teach for Austin Community College's brand new sustainable agriculture department. So not to go too far into it, um, but there are, I teach for both continuing education programs, which means they are not for college credit, as well as accredited classes that students can either get their associate's degree or they can take those credits and transfer it to a four-year university. I teach, all right, I'm, I'll just go down the list, uh, soil science, <laughs> soil and water conservation, That and so, soil science is truly my passion. If I could only think or talk about one thing for the rest of my life, well, it might be Lord of the Rings, but more, more practically, <laughs> it would be soil science. Um, I teach integrated pest management, general botany. Um propagation and greenhouse operations. I teach an irrigation design class. I have taught, I shouldn't have been the teacher, but I did. I taught history of landscape architecture once. What else do I teach? Crop science. Um, 
pretty pretty much anything. I love I love teaching. I love educating. Um, I love finding ways to communicate information to people in a way that they really understand it. Um, I also have have a deep deep love for plants, how they work, soils, what is a healthy soil, how, you know, how a soil is made, how a soil can be amended, um, how the way we treat our soil impacts the water system and the climate in general. Um, as an aside, before I get on a soapbox, soil health is the answer to climate change. That's in any, anybody who wants to talk to me about it, let's, let's have a cup of coffee and talk. But, um, <laughs> Any any time that I am able to gather with a group of people who want to learn more about essentially the magic of the science behind plants and soils, it really, really feeds me and fills my heart in a way that nothing else does. Because when somebody like me looks at the climate crisis and the water crisis, it's easy to get really freaked out and spin out about, you know, nobody cares. There's no solution, whatnot. So when we have these classes, we are building these communities where everyone who shows up actively wants to be part of the solution. And that that is something that helps me sleep easy at night is knowing that there's a lot of us out there and we all want to be part of this. I'm tempted to send you soil for my garden because it failed this year and we're trying to figure out what's up with the soil that what changed with it? What did, cause we didn't do anything else different. So I'm like, all right, now how can I like figure out soil science? So I may have to bug you with a bunch of questions on how to- I desperately want to talk to you about that. For next year. (laughs) (laughs) I wish I knew all this information and I would have grabbed like soil samples. You let me know what tests to do and I'll go do it. We'll figure it out. Then I'll have loads of crops because we had an awful crop yield this year with our garden and the previous years was fantastic that we were giving away vegetables to people and this year just was lacking. So I'm going to investigate it before it all freezes up here in Pittsburgh and have you help us figure out a solution for the spring. So, um, but you do make, you do make a good point though, with balancing all of this and, um, you choosing to not have kids of your own, it's equally important to balance the different buckets and not stretching yourself too thin, even if you are somebody that has a family and understanding it does take a balance to make sure you're not stretching yourself too thin. And it's, you mentioned like you took the energy that you would have done with kids and put it somewhere else. And so you're still as busy as a parent running around and getting everything else done. I feel like you have like four jobs. Check out the full discussion from this bite of advice here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more Mentor Dino content. 